Human-made pollution is now essentially ubiquitous on Earth and can be found everywhere we look. Toxic metals from industry have been detected high in the Himalayan peaks. Plastic fibers have been found in the deepest reaches of the Pacific Ocean. Air pollution continues to be a major health hazard. And of course, there's the all-encompassing spectre of CO2 levels rising. But we can do something about it. The college has been refreshing its research strategy to make sure that we are future looking and, and the first part of that initiative is a programme where we bring together all of our expertise in new energy, in climate change, in the health impacts of pollution, in thinking about business models, all about how to create a sustainable future. Taking carbon as obviously the major pollutant, but also thinking about all the other pollutants that come with our industrialised society and making sure that when we build new systems or we think about creating that new future, we don't result in unintended consequences of things like, you know, if you've got electric vehicles, you also consider tyre particulates and the impact they have on health in urban environments. You think about where does the lithium come from in that battery, you think about how that's processed, you think about recycling of it, you think about car usage, you think about roads and congestion and all of those complex scenarios, you bring them together to really think about what's the optimised outcome, where are the science and engineering challenges in that outcome, but also where are the economic opportunities, where's the policy that's needed, who are the stakeholders. So it, really trying to take a holistic, what we, what, as an engineer we've got a systems-based approach to, to future sustainability. Transition to zero pollution will employ a transformational cross-disciplinary framework for zero pollution research. Imperial College London has an enormous amount of the technical expertise needed to deliver this vision. There is great opportunity for government, industry and research-intensive universities to work together with international partners down to local communities to deliver our vision of a zero pollution society. So we're a university and just to highlight a couple of things, I think one is around education uh, and the importance of uh, educating the next generation of leaders that are going to work in industry, uh, work in politics, work in various stakeholder organisations and drive through the changes. Future goods and services are not going to be based on high carbon options, they're going to be based on low carbon options. And the UK is in a global competition to develop businesses that are able to compete in that space. Universities have a role to play. We have a very vibrant ecosystem of entrepreneurial activity here. Lots of students going off for startups, um, lots of staff creating businesses. So the sector has a role to play uh, in partnership with industry and in partnership with society. A net zero future can be achieved and it could be achieved now if we chose to. We have the technology and a lot of the challenges are about making things truly sustainable, making things affordable, making the choices to adopt technology easy um, and, and able to bring industry together as partners with us to do that. Climate change is real, it's happening now, we've got a very short time to fix it. But on the flip side, actually we have an opportunity to take this climate crisis and create new industry, create different jobs, create clean technologies that will not just alleviate the carbon problem but will provide all the benefits in terms of clean air and clean water and more just society because we create technologies that are accessible and affordable. Energy supply security, thinking about global supply chains and how we can, I guess, understand how they link together and make that more robust. So everything that you would do in creating a carbon neutral or a carbon negative economy actually has many other positives right so even if there wasn't a climate crisis you probably should do it there is a climate crisis and it's imperative to do it but we get an awful lot of added benefits <laughs>